Okay, okay, okay. So it's totally been a while since my last update. So let's talk about all the changes that have been going on with Max. The belt, the belt came off. I think some debris got sucked into it. The armor package has been completely redesigned after the Caldera fight. It was easily the most damage I've ever taken. You can see here he punched clean through the tail and hit the pulley, breaking the V-belt. I used to have a pulley guard, but it was so prone to coming off with the plastites, I just stopped running it. Back right side up for maximize. So the pulley guard's making a return, but with nice through bolts to keep it attached to the tail. I want to slope it this time so that vert hits really glance off, but a non-standard bend profile like this is really hard to manufacture. So it's over to the lathe to turn up a piece of tooling. What this is going to be is a cone that's going to allow me to bend that seven degree conical shape. These parts came out super nice. They're heat treated 4130. I think in the future I'm going to explore working with a higher carbon spring steel, but this was enough to prove my concept with post fabrication heat treating. These parts really paid off in March. I was able to tank this shot from radon right at my pulley and then swing around for a quick return. So how are we going to deal with the damage to the sides of the robot? Before March, I machined these UHMW side panels. They were really nice, but what ended up happening is they were way too solid when Radon hit them. He was able to tear and pull them. You can see the bot lifting up here causing me to oversteer. So I want a material that ablates a bit better, so I'm switching back to good old TPU. So why did my weapon shaft fail in March against Grim Ripper? With the design of the shaft, there was this hard stress riser right on top where the weapon meets the shaft. To solve this, I went to a flange shaft to more evenly distribute the torsional load. Will allow you to rack up aggression points with the judges. Oh, and the no! weapon is gone! It's gone! <laughs> So there's a couple things happening here. The key tooth hits one weapon, and because Amphisabana has two weapons, he was able to hit the counterweight and kind of pop the shaft off all at once. No other robot is capable of doing this. Fundamentally, I didn't solve the problem with the stress riser point during a bending load. So after talking to Brandon Bennett Young about this, he challenged me to design a tapered shaft that has a smoother transition for the load. That way I can have an effective high diameter joining point. But why not just go with a higher diameter shaft? 
This is what I did with my first 12, Doomba. It had a three quarters inch shaft running on tapered roller bearings. And the main answer is weight. This thing came in at 0.8 pounds with the straight wall bearings. Because of the straight walls, the size increases greatly to accept the larger shaft. But if I can replace the inner race with the shaft itself, I can get a good compromise between lightweight bearing and a big shaft. But to pull this idea off, I needed to see if I can even get the bearings out of a tapered roller bearing. So before we continue the engineering process on this, we gotta ask ourselves why the old 4140 shaft didn't break. I mean, these shots from Crunk are just as hard as the ones against Amphisabena, but at that time I was on a half inch shaft, which is significantly smaller. I think there's two things going on here. I think the tail is longer, which is absorbing more impact, but I also think the old shafts were softer, which resulted in a higher impact strength. When I had the flange shafts made, they were hardened to 49 HRC, which has significantly less IZOD impact strength. But Jay, what is IZOD impact? Is 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 impact? impact? impact. <laughs> Thank you for the question. IZOD impact strength is a destructive test where a sample is broken with a raised hammer. The difference between the height of the hammer is the energy that's absorbed by the material during breaking. So how did the impact strength compare between the old shaft versus the flange shaft? Well, it wasn't good. It was one tenth of the impact strength at 49 HRC. It's important to note here that HRC is a nonlinear scale. So the flange shaft being 49 is not an 18% difference. It's a 60% difference in hardness. But what was I going for here when I made these harder? And that's more yield strength. It was about 50% more yield strength just from the change in the heat treat. For the new design, I wanna shoot the gap between the previous iterations and have high impact strength of the old shafts while not sacrificing the yield strength. I also confirmed that the heat treating process that LTC is using has a normalization step. Okay, I swear this, okay. 3D Find It is one of our sponsors, but they don't even know that I'm putting this in this video. I actually used their service for the first time to get accurate CAD models and confirm that the race was correct. See, there's a bunch of models on the internet for these bearings and they are all different. With 3D Find It, I was able to download the OEM CAD and confirm that the new design was an exact match with the stock races. Here's the finished product. I'm so happy about the engineering of this. It's such a cool progression for the platform and I think it's gonna do great things. To get an understanding of just how beefy this thing really is at the connection point, you gotta compare it to a three quarters inch shaft. But how about that weight? Our three quarter inch stack came in at 0.8 pounds. Well, the tapered shaft comes in at half that weight. I'm super stoked about how that worked out. So let's finish up the tail and spin up the robot. I can't wait to compete in two weeks at NHRL's June 1st Teams event alongside my team Chainsaw Kitty and Pepe Sylvia. See y'all there.